this place was up for a long time and then we drove by one day and then the for sale sign was down and we were all just like, all right, okay. <laughs> I guess we have to start over. I don't know why, but I had had a picture of the realtor's sign. Um, and so we like reached out to them and was like, are you interested? And I think it was pretty quick that we acquired the property after that. So it was good that we just took that risk because it's, I don't think there's any other property that we had looked at that would be this significant to us. The zoning for the school really protects our solar rights. And so having that for both the passive as well as the solar panels really was important for our long-term kind of success on the project. Um, we wanted to live inner city so it was still accessible to downtown because Glenn and I both work um, downtown. We wanted to be able to walk. One of the hardest parts was actually finding someone who wanted to do the project and who was qualified. And who was qualified and we trusted to actually like come out with the product that we needed. Not many people were willing to take it on and us assembling the team took probably three years. We went through a lot of interviewing people, trying to get quotes, having basically people tell us our our vision of what we wanted the price to come in at wasn't realistic. So I had emailed Heather um, at Homes by Sorensen and just said, you know, I, is this something you guys would be interested in? And she emailed me within like two hours and was like, yes. When these clients asked us to build a passive house, we were very excited, I would say. Um, oh, yeah. Because we had not built to the passive standard yet. There's a lot of, you know, consideration that needs to come into agreeing to build a passive home. There's a large large array of different standards that you can build to and the passive standard is the upper echelon the top tier there is a lot more detail uh, that goes into this to hit the passive standard which is a lot more stringent to hit than a net zero standard we met with them at one of our um, net zero energy homes um, we connected they were awesome we our, our visions our values aligned. I think we knew from that point that these were the people that we wanted to build our house. Yeah, Axel was telling me about <laughs> how he puts together pot lights uh, to not lose energy through the pot lights and I was like, this is, this is our guy. <laughs> Essentially we're building two passive homes here. There's two homes connected here. Uh, it wasn't just a box, it was a two-story home in the back and a bungalow in the front. Part of it was um, because we were trying to help each other out in a way. So I've been around for a lot longer than Glenn and M and I had some money saved up. Glenn and M have income, but they didn't have a lot of down payment. It seemed like a good way to, to have a nice home, but not too large and that we could both afford. I am now retiring. And um, so I wanna make sure that I've got something that I can live in comfortably. Part of the design concept was us laying out all the most important things we wanted to achieve with the house. And I think the order was um, privacy, affordability, and net zero. When they initially came to us, they had two box homes that were just uh, stacked on top of each other. Heather was gonna be living in the uh, bottom unit and Emily and Glenn were gonna be living in the top unit. Axel talked a lot about how, because we had these big central spaces that we wanted to achieve, both for the solar as well as um, for the feel of our living rooms, it would create a drum mm -hmm. effect below on the lower floor. So we had to go back to the drawing board and find something that worked for both of them. Uh, while still getting a lot of southern exposure, which is key for this passive house project. Paired with that is um, two totally different interior design concepts. Heather's home was really focused on kind of a timeless, regal, very fresh vibe. And Emily and Glenn's home was eclectic and vintage and plywood. And we were able to achieve one building, two homes, very different design concepts, inside and out. For Glenn and I, it's really about like, how can we minimize our impact? Both the vanities and the bathrooms are repurposed credenzas or dressers. We really wanted the cost to come in low uh, so that other people would not look at it and go, yeah, but I can't afford that. The idea of economies of scale, like the fact that you can take two houses and put them together, you taking that economies of scale and putting it into passive house makes it way cheaper. I love the idea of having um, to do something that um, is sustainable. And um, I think other families can copy this. I think another key piece too, is that we can show other builders this level of high performance homes so that more people and more builders can be building to the standard. And we, we can just get more homes like this in Canada. Sorensen's just did a fabulous job. We're so appreciative of like the team that has worked with us on this. It's uh... 
It's a pretty ambitious project, I think. All around, this is just such an incredible home to be a part of and finish.